Welcome back to the channel. My name is Alex Funk. And if you're here watching this right now, my book is live, thedreamslist.com. You can go check it out. I will link it in the bio below. And I'm super excited for people to get their hands on the book. Obviously, I put just about four years into this book and I've talked about it on the channel a lot. So I appreciate that you even clicked on this video. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Alex Funk. In three years while earning the same income as a police officer, accountant, almost teacher, I went on 86 flights, bought two houses, ran a treadmill marathon, did a bodybuilding competition, crossed off 250 other dreams. And my book, The Dreams List, gives you the blueprint how. So today I'm going to be breaking down a little bit about the book. I'm also just going to be giving you a little bit of behind the scenes of how we made the book happen from day one to today, launch day. So strap in. Thank you for being here. And here we go. Welcome back. Today, I am going to be talking about my book a little bit, a four-year project that is done. It is ready and it is available for purchase, thedreamslist.com. Otherwise, you can go to alexrfunk.com and you can find it on Amazon as well, The Dreams List. And I am super excited to dive into just how the book came to be, give you a little bit of behind the scenes of, of the process of the book, and then also summarize a little bit of the book as well. So this won't be a long video or, or long audio, but it'll be a little peek behind the curtain and I encourage you go get the book. I put my heart and soul into this thing and like 10 different people have helped write it and edit it. And uh, this was a huge project for, for a lot of people, including myself, obviously. So first things first, I want to give a little background on how the book came to be. So a lot of people, I think when you, when you think of writing a book, at least this is what it would, you know, what I would have thought of is sit down, write, sit down, write, sit down, write, sit down, write. Now for me, the process of the book took four years. And if I broke that into timelines, the first two and a half, the first two full years of the book process was actually me just trying to find the right book to write. So I started this process in the fall of 2020 when I was training for a marathon and every week of the marathon training, I was journaling as I was running. So I was journaling, running, writing down all of the lessons I was learning. And if you've ever run a marathon before, if you've ever done marathon training, you would relate the, the training is the hardest part. So I was journaling every lesson that I was getting while I was doing the training. And about halfway through, I realized like, I'm going to write a book. I'm going to write a book. And then towards the end of my training, it was the book that became the reason for the running rather than the other way around. So the book kind of saved me on not quitting on the running because I'd already told so many people that I was writing a book about the experience. So by the time I got done with running the marathon and training for it, ran it on a treadmill. I was traveling to Oahu that March and there was no Wi-Fi, no movies on the plane. I had nine hour flight of just, you know, we didn't have rod dog in plane flights back then three years ago. But so I took all of my lessons that I had in my journal right here, my one line a day journal, which I've talked about before on here. And I have every day of my life, I have it all journaled out. So if you're watching the video version of this, right, you could see I, I literally have every day of my life journaled out. So I took those lessons and I created this basically like outline of the book. So if you're watching the video version of this, I'm actually going to pull this up right now. And if you're on the podcast version, check out my YouTube. But here's a quick insight of what it looked like. Now I'm trying to share. There we go. The marathon journey all of those lessons ended up being, I think, like a pretty good book outline. So you could see right here, or I'll just, you know, talk about it for those listening, but it was any, any illustration of growth. It's the mindset of growth diagram here is that at the beginning of anything, it's easy, right? It's fun. And we're really excited about like, okay, I'm starting something new. And then we, and then it, evens out. Then it's like, okay, the monotony of it and going through the motions and doing the same thing. And then that's where most people reach the breaking point. That's where we always reach the breaking point. And most people will just restart, go back to zero and, and restart the process. This is any new year's resolution. This is any whatever. But with the marathon, what I found was when I finally reached that breaking point in the middle of December, okay, or like first week of December, I was able to make the decision that, you know what? No, I'm going to break through. And that's what got me to the next level. And it is this diagram and this journey that I think is applicable to anything that we do in life. And uh, that was the first, you know, shell of a book. So I had an entire book outline written. And from there, I wrote a rough draft. So I, I took the first year after the marathon, I finished the rough draft, December 29th, 2021. I had the rough draft done. And at that point, I had reached out to a publishing company and I signed up for one of their workshops that August. So I basically had, and it costed a lot of money. 
Okay. So if you're not a famous person, it is hard to get a book deal. You kind of have to just buy a book deal. And that's what I did. I invested money that I didn't really have yet, but because it was in August, I figured, okay, well, January through August, I'll just make enough money to pay for everything in my life, pay for all the coaching I'm doing and all that and pay for the book deal. So I gave myself eight months, work really hard, get there. And I did. And when I showed up to the book retreat or the book workshop in Austin, Texas, that August, they encouraged the book, but they also were way more in thrilled by the dreams list concept. They were like, oh, that's awesome. I can't believe you ran a treadmill marathon. So what's this dreams list? And they were really pressing me on the dreams list and it still didn't click for me yet that hmm, maybe I sh maybe that's what I should you know, write a book about. It didn't, it didn't really click until that fall. When I came back, I, I kind of like threw the the 26.2 out the window, which is crazy. But even though I had spent a year and a half on this book idea of 26.2, I kind of realized, okay, I'm not writing to runners. And if someone's not a runner, they're probably not going to pick that book up. And so I needed to figure out what is the title? What is the subtitle? What is the cover that is going to get people to pick up this book because the inside's probably not going to change that much but you know who am i writing to what's my avatar and what are their problems and what's my what's the solution and as i went down a like 3 month journey with a, men, a mentor mike monroe we realized that the dreams list that was going to be what i was going to write about and so man there's so many steps i'm skipping in this process too but so then we we started writing the book and how i wrote it was i started with the name of the book. And then I started, and then I went subtitle and then I went chapter outline that I thought would fit or I know three sections that I thought the book should be about. So the sections of the book, and now this gets into the, you know, second half of the video or the audio, which is, you know, a little summary of the book here, but the sections of the book that I went with were section one lifestyle design. So basically why dream section two is what, so why, what, how basically. So section two is the dreams list. So it's what, Okay, as you can see right here, section one, lifestyle design, section two, the dreams list, and then section three of my book right here, achieving your dreams. So how to achieve your dreams, essentially. And that's where actually a lot of the lessons from my 26.2, that's where they actually show back up. So I, I was super excited about that outline, chapters five, chapters four, or five chapters, four chapters, five chapters that would fit in the outline. So anyone that wants to write a book or anybody that is, you know, like, oh, I, you know, I think it'd be cool, but I could never use this next couple of minutes here to, to figure out like, okay, if this formula worked for Alex to write, you know, I'm going to call my shot bestseller right today. If you know, enough of you go buy it, right. If this formula worked for Alex, I could probably do it too. And you can like, that's the whole, you know, the whole book really is like, you can do anything. You just have to break it down. So for me, I chose the title. I chose the mission. I chose the first, the sections, and then I chose the chapters within those sections. Then within the chapters, I figured out, okay, Every chapter of this book, I need a show and I need to tell. So facts tell stories sell, right? Well, I was I didn't want to write it just just write a book that was just facts and me telling you what to do and whatever. I didn't even really include any of my own stories in the, in the entire book. There's not really much about myself at all except for the introduction. Every chapter has a show, which is a historical story or study like the Apollo 11 moon landing or like Elon Musk building Tesla or like Royal Diamonds crossing the South Pole. Every chapter has a story that fits the tell that goes with the chapter, which is my expertise or the lesson that I'm trying to get across in each chapter. So once I established, all right, here's what my show is. Here's what my tell is for every chapter. Then I grabbed the book Psychology of Money which is one of my favorite books. And it was the easiest book that I had ever read. So if you haven't read Psychology of Money, very easy book to read. And I decided I want my book to follow the same kind of shell or outline as Psychology of Money. And so I studied the book Psychology of Money, not in terms of the content within the book, but I studied how did he write it? What's the flow? And I actually took notes, which I could pull back up for, for those seeing the video version of this as well. But I actually took notes on, okay, here's the flow of his chapters. It usually goes, and I did this for every chapter, but I found like the most common thread. It usually goes story, his insight, a study that backs up the story, more on the story that expands it, more of his insight, a fact that will blow your mind, another story that fits the first story, and then wrap up the chapter with my own insight or something like that. I could pull up, I am literally just trying to load on my computer right now, but once I figured out, okay, this is Morgan Housel, the author of Psychology of Money. This is his flow. 
Then all I had to do was take my chapter outlines. Okay. So chapter one of my book is we don't live to survive anymore. Okay. And I knew that in that chapter, what I was trying to get across to people was that the reason that we feel so uncomfortable chasing our dreams is not because of anything besides it is evolutionary. It, It is in our blood now to feel uncomfortable when we go against the grain, when we go against the pack. And it's because for thousands of years, our ancestors, if they didn't fit in, they would die, right? If they didn't fit in, they wouldn't find a mate. And if they didn't find a mate, those genes wouldn't pass on. So for literally thousands of years, the only genes that passed on from our ancestors and down were of those who fit in, was of those who conformed with the society around them. And I knew that for chapter one of my book, I want to talk about that. And I want people to understand there's nothing wrong with going against the grain, but here's why you feel so uncomfortable when you do. Here's why you feel uncomfortable when you make sales calls and cold calls. Here's why you feel uncomfortable when you decide to put yourself on a stage and do a musical, right? Here's why you feel uncomfortable when you start a YouTube channel or when you uh, start your own business. It's because it's not normal. It is not the normal thing to do. And it's in our blood now right? So anyway, chapter one, I knew that that's the message I wanted to get across. All I needed to do then was find a historical story or a study that fit that theme. So I could do the show and tell of the chapter is the show and then the tell. So finding a historical story, finding a study that would make people go, wow, look at that paradigm shift. And then using my tell, which is, Hey, here's why you feel uncomfortable chasing your dreams. So the show and tell, and then fitting that into Morgan Housel's chapters. So chapter outlines, I should say, chapter shells. So I would fill in the shell based on what I had for material and I would figure out, okay, I'm still missing one more story or maybe I'm missing one more study that would back that up or maybe I'm missing just an insight from myself. And eventually I had 14 chapters worth of, okay, this, 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 this. What I then did was I took all of that, I put it into chat GPT and I said, give me a cleaned up, and expand a little bit on everything chapter outline for this chapter in the voice of Morgan Housel or whatever. And it would give me, it would kind of like bolster up all of my points and it would make it flow a little bit better. And then what I did was I said, for each point, I would put the point in and I'd say, here's three sentences on this point, make it a paragraph or make it two paragraphs. And what I got at the end of doing all of that was these really long points of each chapter of each section. And this for me, this is how I do speeches. So when I'm on stage, I never have a script. When I run a sales training, I never have a script. I have outlines. And so now for my own book, I now had outlines. So what did I do? I didn't type. I didn't sit down and type. I actually talked. I literally grabbed my phone, voice memos app, and I walked. I would walk. I was trying to get to 10,000 steps a week. This was last summer. And I would walk and talk the chapters. And my rule of thumb was, okay, I have these outlines. I need to fill 30 minutes. And that's the same thing I do when I give like a keynote speech is, okay, I have 25 minutes. Here's my outline. And I know based on the flow, because I've I've talked in front of crowds so many times or in front of groups or teams that, okay, I know I have this space to fill. Here's my content, fill it. And that's what I did for my book. And I literally did 14 chapters based on filling the space allotted with the material that I had provided myself. And once I did that, I put it on YouTube, transcribed it, copy pasted it back into a notes. And then I used a AI service. I can't remember what it's even called. Reword, I think it's called. And it, and what it did was it cleaned up the transcriptions into actual sentences and paragraphs. And so I didn't have to go through and type. So then I had this like complete book of reworded me talking transcription. And from that point on, the amount of editing and the amount of revisions and the amount of Like I, from that point on, I used Grammarly. I plugged the whole book into Grammarly one chapter at a time. And the score that Grammarly gave me for each chapter, even after the AI cleaned it up was like 55 out of a hundred. So then I had over 100 revisions from Grammarly for every chapter. It got it to scores 99 out of a hundred. I then took those paid an editor, a good amount of money. We did three sets of edits, every set she would edit, I would have 100 to 300 uh, changes to either accept, decline, or it would be changes that I would need to actually work and put my brain to and and retype. And there was three sets of those, 100 to 300 edits. This is after the Grammarly. Then I had that done. 
the company that I was publishing my book for went under. They literally went bankrupt. Scribe Media, they're back now, okay? But they went under and I was sitting there with like kind of a finished book. And at that point, I kind of like made my own cover idea of what I thought the cover could look like. And I realized, wow, I need a new publisher. So guess what I did? I paid a new publisher. And like I said, if you don't have clout yet, it's hard to get your book published unless you go pay for it. So there are services online. If you hit me up or comment, I can tell you what, what companies I worked with and the people that I connected with uh, to, uh, to leverage that. But I then had this like finished book and I realized, okay, well, I have some time now. I want it to be even better. And so I went online and I, I looked up ghostwriters and I tried to find some ghostwriters. I said, hey, I don't actually need you to write me a book. I don't need you to rewrite this book. I just need really, really powerful and professional editing. It's been edited three times, but I just, I have time. So I want to make sure it's an amazing book because I'm, I'm still looking for a publishing company. And I found eight different people that were really good. I paid them all to write me a sample and I went with the best one. I went with this woman. She took my chapter and it was just little verbiage changes. It was little shifts. It was little edits. And I loved hers the most. And she did three edit revisions where I then took it, accepted, changed, whatever, sent it back. We did three of those. And then I had another like finished book. And then I found one more person who I wish I remembered these women, their names, because the last lady was unreal. So good. We did four edits together. Like I did probably two to 3000 revisions edit, like singular edit revisions after my book was already done. And uh, then I turned it in, the, it went into publishing, which then I had even more edit and revisions because it went into formatting, which took over four months. So from March this year to July this year, it was in formatting, more revisions, more of me accepting those, working with those. And yeah, I probably put, I probably had thousands of hours into this project. And so to have it done, to have it here, I feel blessed. You know, it's so cool holding it in my hand. It really is. And now I'm pumped for launch day today or whenever you saw this because I feel good about, I think it can be a bestseller. I think you guys can help me make it a bestseller. And what I'm most excited about is I think when people get this in their hand, it's something that's going to change their life. It's something that's going to change your life. Um, we need more people to start dreaming. We need more people to unlock the power right here of turning someday into today. And, you know, it makes me nervous to think like, man, I hope it's a good book. But at the same time, the amount of eyeballs that went into this and the amount of revisions and the amount of edits and the amount of mentorship that, that helped me create this and my own, like my own experiences that, that kind of led the show and tells I'm really excited about. So it's surreal. You know, I feel great being able to hold it and I'm excited if you're watching this right now, again, or listening to this, the dreamslist.com. Thank you for being a support. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Give this a thumbs up, subscribe, rate five stars and get your hands on the book. If you go to the dreamslist.com, I have some awesome bonuses on there. Things like 2,500 dreams. Oh, it's actually over 3,000, 3,200 dreams for you to steal that are based on my own dreams. I have a dreams list template for free. I have a goals, vivid vision exercise on there that I recorded and did for free. Q and A, the first version of my audiobook for free. So. If you go to thedreamslist.com, there's a ton of free stuff on there, signed copies, hardcover for free, all kinds of stuff if you look at that. So, hey, thank you for supporting. Thank you for being here. I hope you love the book. I really hope you love the book because I put my heart and soul into it for, for you know, three, four years. So thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. And we will see you next time. And enjoy the book. Seriously. Thank you.